using canines for prison security. You know, there used to be a time when we used canines for cell extractions. And up until at least 2006, there were approximately five states left in the United States that used canines for cell extractions. But human rights activists jumped all over that, so we're pretty much faded out with using canines for cell extractions. But let me know if any of you know of cell extraction uh, being done with canines anywhere. That would be interesting. And let's talk about canines and the, their use within the correctional uh, functions, security functions. Hello, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe if you like this video. I've always had a love for the canines and their handlers. Um, I never was a canine handler in my 28-year career, but I definitely used them a lot after I moved up into the uh, prison inspector uh, rank, and I saw how valuable these canines are to our correction system and also to our investigative uh, casework when we were looking for narcotics and smuggled cell phones. So let's talk about the ways, how many ways can we use canines in our prison system or our correction setting? We all know about the bloodhounds that we use for tracking escaped prisoners. Uh, that's been used for centuries and the bloodhounds are very good and they are the best dogs to use when we're searching for escaped inmates. Uh, but there are many other types of canines that we can use for many other things. Uh, we know that the German Shepherds or the Labradors or Labs are great for doing narcotic searches within our prison, uh, searching for drugs. Many times uh, as a uh, prison inspector, I would call uh, on our canine units. We, when I first started, we had to use the local law enforcement canine units, but now in Florida, the Inspector General's office has developed their own canine unit that is available when we need them. So what we would do is if we suspected drugs were hidden in the law library, which we all know the law, uh, law librarians in there, those inmates, we know they're not going to do things like that. However, for some reason, we found an abundance of drugs using canines inside the books on the library shelves and uh, they were very useful. Instead of us having to go through every book page by page and shaking them out, uh, the canine would run through the library and hit on a particular bookshelf. Uh, sometimes they would even sit and the handler would give their command and the dog would even paw the uh, books down from the shelf, sometimes actually hitting the exact book where the drugs were hidden. So it saves a lot of time and a lot of manpower using the canines for narcotic searches within the prisons. And I think we need to do that more often. We need to uh, have unannounced canines, and we need our corrections people to have their own canine handlers. We don't have to, we're law enforcement, corrections is law enforcement, we're a branch of the uh, criminal justice system. We don't need to have to call local law enforcement or the state troopers in with their canines, which we don't have to anymore here in Florida. We have our own corrections officers um, with their vehicles and their canine units, and they're available when we need them. We also have some canines that are stationed at the prison, so um, it works out really well and saves a lot of manpower. And we need to use them more often on surprise dorm searches, unannounced dorm searches, where we line the inmates up, move them out into a, a certain area, and run the uh, canines through to look for narcotics. Now remember, we also have dogs now with our technology. Scientists have been able to uh, find a way that uh, our canines can detect cell phones. And as we all know, cell phones are a huge problem in our corrections facilities across the nation, our jails and our prisons. And now we can actually use canines to search for cell phones. And in a minute, I'm going to get back to the cell extractions because that's a big issue uh, with human rights activists. But I want to continue on with things that um, we can use canines for riot control. Now, if we have a big riot in a prison 
uh, why not use canines for riot control? We would use the larger German Shepherd type dogs. There are other breeds we can use. And <clears throat> for riot control or crowd control, uh, the canines are great. And you know, with the staff shortages we have now, think about it. We have staff shortages and I think every prison and jail, I don't think you could pick one anymore in our country where we don't have staff shortages. So, for crowd control, riot control, let's use canines. Let's get the canines in there and help with our staff shortage problem and help protect a lot of our officers from being injured because the canines will protect a lot of staff from being injured when used properly and they will help in riot and crowd control. Um, now, we talked about cell searches. You know, that's, that's been a topic. Most of our um, prison officials, our higher ups, our politicians and our criminal justice uh, higher ups have shied away from that. And they've actually said that the best method to use, you know, is uh, what we're using right now with our um, uh, stun shields and our extraction teams and our gases and our pepper ball guns and things like that. So I, I thought, you know, I'll go ahead and say it. I think that if it's serious, serious, serious combative inmate, I think that the cell extraction with a canine would be great. We use the canine on the street to chase down a person, a fleeing felon. And I've worked both in the prison and the jail and uh, the courthouse. So I have seen these guys come in from the streets uh, after a canine has bit them in the leg or in the arm. But, you know, they're a fleeing felon. Uh, they're saying that the jails and prisons, though, are a different story. Um, so they've shied away from using canines for cell extraction. So if you have any thoughts on that, what you think about using canines for cell extraction, and I don't mean on every cell extraction, but do you think there are some times when we should use a canine on a cell extraction? It won't change anything probably on what you think or I think because um, the higher ups have made their mind up pretty much that we're not going to use them for cell extractions anymore. I am curious to know if any of you are using them for cell extractions. Um, I, you know, I don't think it should be used on everyone, but I think in certain circumstances it, it may need to be used, especially if we know we have an inmate who has injured officers over and over and over, and he will injure or kill another officer. Why can't we use a canine? Okay. Well, I, I read on what the, why the human rights people think we can't use a canine. I'm not talking to them right now. I'm talking to uh, our fellow uh, correctional officer, brothers and sisters. What do you think about that? Um, also, um, I, I like the idea of using our own people because it gives our own people the opportunity to grow and go to canine handling school and, and grow and have a canine and have another position to be proud of within the corrections uh, facilities and the uh, and the corrections jobs, and you know we've talked before about people staying the staff shortage, and we've talked in other videos about people moving around a little bit to get a change of pace, and this will help prolong your career and help you make it to that 20, 25, 30 year mark to retirement. So you've been on the floor as an officer for a long time. You're a good officer, and you want to be a canine handler. Well, this affords you the opportunity to put in to be a canine handler. We, we have here in Florida uh, officers in canine units within the Inspector General's office who worked the floor for many years, and I know several of these guys and girls, and they worked the floor for many years. They put in 10, 15 years on the floor, and they earned the right to, to, to have an opportunity to be a canine handler and it gives them another job, another opportunity to grow, and they may want to stay there till their career is over, or they may want to use that as uh, more experience to put in for lieutenant, captain, major, colonel down the road, you know, maybe even become a warden down the road. So um, I like these type of opportunities that we can give our staff. So let's don't 
use outside agency canines any longer, in my opinion. Let's use our own people to do our own job and our own people to make these uh, uh, canine handlers and busts and narcotic searches and cell phone searches and, and do our own thing on our own. We can handle everything ourselves uh, without having outside agencies. Now, on escapes, of course, we're going to use all agencies, police departments, sheriff's departments, fire departments, EMS, corrections, everybody. That's a different story. When an inmate escapes, we want, we want the whole uh, uh, first responders everywhere to be involved so we can catch these guys. But um, uh, on the inside, I'm talking about canine use for everyday um, corrections. Now, what about out patrol dogs? What about using canines as patrol dogs? Um, you know, staff shortages, we have outside perimeter. Some prisons have as much as three or four areas that need to be covered on outside perimeter. Uh, will canines help on the outside perimeter? What's your, what are your thoughts on that? Letting canines run the perimeter. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? I mean, if the inmate jumps the first fence somehow, which they have, they've used pillows and bed mattresses and blankets to get over. Well, if you have canines running the perimeter, that's another barrier. They'd have to get over the first fence and then get to get over the next fence, there's, there's canines between there. You know the old moats with the uh, alligators back in the in the old days in the medieval times. But uh, would that work, in your opinion, uh, having canine patrol dogs or a canine is a dog having canines running patrol in a secondary perimeter around the prison, creating another barrier. And then of course you could still have your one or two. Uh, bodies out there with uh, shotguns and the double op buck if you wish uh, to have that as well so then you have uh, a third barrier so um, <clears throat> I think that the um, canines could come in very well I believe that if you look at the costs of the canines versus the cost uh, of uh, the officers with the insurance and all that. I'm, I'm not saying we need more officers. We need more human bodies. Uh, but I think the canines could help us on the staff shortage. I'm thinking a canine could start anywhere from $7,500 from what I read on up. Of course, you have the veterinary care and you have the uh, uh, canine handler. So maybe you have a canine that'll help with manpower and crowd control, riot control, patrolling the perimeter, but you still have to have that canine handler to deal with the canine. So we're still using, uh, we're going to still need people and, and, you know, to handle the dogs and that may or may not help with our staff shortage. But I think that the canines would be a big benefit to help us and to quell a disturbance much quicker than uh, us going in ourselves. So let me know what you think about canines for prison security. How do you handle it with your agency? Do you even have canines available? Do you have canines right there with you on your prison property? Uh, what type, what kind, and how do you do it? Thanks for watching. Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe if you like this video.